Welcome to St. John in the Wilderness on this third Sunday of Easter. It's wonderful to see all of you and a privilege to worship with you this morning. Just a few announcements that come to mind. Uh, first of all, we have a holy hike on Tuesday, this Tuesday at 9.30 at Pearson's Falls over near Saluda. And it is a short hike, an easy hike, and a really beautiful hike. It's more of a walk about a half mile. So we hope that you'll join us if you haven't participated in one of those before, perhaps because you were concerned that it might be a, a little bit too wild for you, then this is a great one to come out and enjoy the wild flowers and the waterfall and, and worship with one another. So that's Tuesday at 9.30. Call the office on Monday and let us know you're coming so we can prepare for you. Also, we've been uh, talking a little bit about the St. Paul's Edneyville Community Food Pantry. And this is a ministry we've been supporting for some time, and, and they could use some volunteers. My family's going to go out on Wednesday evening, and we've got room for a couple more folks. If you'd like to join us, then just let me know. And we can go and stock some shelves before they distribute food on Thursday. We're just spending some time trying to get to know a lot of these ministries that we've been supporting for a number of years and finding ways to be more attuned to their needs and to how we might uh, be a part of the good work that they're doing. Any other announcements? For the good of the order that I'm forgetting? Okay. Well, again, welcome to you, especially if you're new or you're visiting. We welcome you. We hope you'll take a moment to fill out a card in your pew, and we look forward to getting to know you better. Please stand as we begin. You'll find your opening hymn on the first page of your book. <laughs>
Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread, open the eyes of our faith that we may behold him in all his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected and killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he has foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah, Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Answer me when I call, God, defender of my cause. Here you set me free when I am hard-pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart, more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace, at once I fall asleep, for only you, Lord, make me dwell in A reading from the first letter of John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is where we are. The reason the world does not know us is that we did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, but we be what we will be has not been revealed. What we do know is this, when he revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. 
Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank 
forgiveness of sin is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. The liturgically aware worshiper will notice that when the Alleluias come back, our Old Testament readings each Sunday get swapped out with readings from the Acts of the Apostles. The book of Acts is the continuation of Luke's gospel. It's about how these disciples of Jesus, who were not all that special when they had Jesus in the flesh to learn from, begin to do amazing things in God's name as they live together as the church after Easter. Here we find the resurrection community taking shape, and you can bet this is the same community that we are sharing in today. So lean in and listen to those Acts readings. Here's how we'll get into our Acts reading this morning. Just an observation that I've noticed. I want you to remember a very common scene in many movies and TV shows. You might find this in a drama or a romantic comedy. You would find this in a show about raising kids or about finding oneself. Here's how it goes. This is how it plays out. A main character faces a challenging situation, a trial of some kind, when many things do not go well. This person especially was trying to live up to some standard set by a loved one, by society, or by themselves. There is that moment of despair when the main character just cannot succeed, can't do it. And so this protagonist thinks to himself or to herself, I just, I just can't do this. What's the point of this? I've tried and tried and there's no way. And then looking at their companion, perhaps a romantic interest, perhaps a parent, perhaps a friend, they say, I guess this is what you expected all along. You were right. I'm just no good after all. Then do you know what the other person says in response? And this is what I've been getting at. I think every single time that person closest to that main character says to him or to her, we never expected you to be perfect. All I've ever wanted is for you to be happy. To be happy. Well, isn't that just adorable? <laughs> to be happy, it sounds so nice. To be happy. What in the world does that mean? Is that the journey we are supposed to be on? I think this is truly some kind of postmodern, emotional, consumeristic naivete that only people in the last few decades have ever articulated. Of course, on one level, we want everyone to be happy, but isn't happiness an emotion? And isn't it rather foolish to think that we can sustain any kind of quality of life based on feeling one way or another? Are we supposed to be on some kind of life mission to find happiness? Is there a way we can live where all of our problems will just go away? Is that the biblical view of things? Is that something that God wants for us? Could there be for us more than an endless search for moments when our fleeting emotions line up nicely and we feel good. Could there be more for us than that? We are on a quest. We are searching. It's God that we're looking for. We are on a quest to live lives of faithfulness. We find ourselves hoping to know something of God's love for us and to share that love with the world. We can go deeper 
than happiness. This Easter, we might to begin, we might begin to live lives of joy, lives of deep and abundant joy, lives of Easter wonder filled with gratitude and peace. That's what we're after. Contentment that is buzzing with life and love, it's joy that we're after. And our Acts reading today has a lot to say about joy. But we're going to have to go a bit deeper in that reading than just what we heard in our small portion of it in Acts chapter 3. Remember, this is the story of Jesus' disciples living into and living out that Easter message. This is the story of Acts chapter 3. So go ahead, grab your Bibles. Open them up to Acts chapter 3. I've always wanted to say that in a sermon. So now we've checked that box. The story begins like this, Acts 3. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. Perhaps the religious people, right, would share a little something. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And the man fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk and entered the temple with him, walking and leaping and praising God. And they recognized him as the one who used to sit and beg at the beautiful gate. And they were filled with wonder and awe and amazement at what had happened to him. While the man clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's Portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, saying, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us, as though by our power or piety we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, The God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate. You rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. You remember what Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you, and it will be that everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be rooted out of the people. And all the prophets, as many as have spoken from Samuel and those after him, also predicted these days. You are the descendants of the prophets and of the covenant that God gave to your ancestors, saying to Abraham, In your descendants all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, Jesus, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Acts chapter 3. This is an Easter story 
that we've heard, and it's about sharing lives of joy. First, we have the man who is healed. We are ones who find ourselves being made well by Jesus of Nazareth, whom, as Peter said, God raised from the dead. And this man finds new life again in Christ. His feet and ankles are made strong. He stood up and began to walk. Now, if your legs get healed, then you're going to have to stand up and walk. That's a given. But our text says that he began to leap and to praise God. He's actually jumping for joy. Now, we know that it wasn't just his legs were, that were healed, but when Peter and John looked at him, making eye contact with a beggar, reaching out their hand and touching an untouchable, that Christ's Easter life began for that man that day, and he began to jump for joy. We can be so serious in our religiosity, but this is a joyful life we are living, not because of what we have or because things are easy all of the time, but because Christ is risen. And we find ourselves sharing in his risen life that is making us well. Be joyful, my friends. That's why I'm so excited to be having a parish breakfast again in May. We know how to fast these days. We know how to give things up. But do we remember how to feast? When I was interviewing here and getting to know this parish, you told me that you love to have these breakfasts. You told me that they aren't just breakfasts. They're a time when we come together in fellowship to feast with one another. They're a time when the chefs of St. John offer their gifts to us all. And you know what? I believed you. Now we are going to remember how to feast again. Now what if the feast is going to look a little bit different than before? What if we're going to have to eat outside or wear masks or space out? Christ is risen and feast we must. That's kind of how it is with all of our ministries these days. Things might look a little bit different now, but in the end we have Easter work to do. Let's adapt, let's celebrate with joy. Let's joyfully witness to the risen Christ. And that's the other part of this Acts reading. Peter and John have encountered Christ alive just like you have encountered Christ alive and are now witnesses to his resurrection. They are saying to the people in the temple that this is the continuation of that story of God's that they know well. God came to Abraham and his descendants that that family might be a blessing to the whole world. And now God has raised up his servant Jesus, sending him to you to fill you with joy so that you might share that joy with all. We can invite others to this Easter feast now. Living lives of joy does not mean that it's smooth sailing all of the time. Instead, it means that we are deeply rooted in God. As 1 John says this morning, we have been made children of God. God has claimed you most spectacularly in the resurrection. We will face hardship. We will find ourselves unsure of the way. But our joy can remain even then. As our burial liturgy says, even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And you know what's beautiful about being joyful when times are challenging? Because then joy becomes an act of resistance that declares just how big our God really is. You'll never guess what happens next in our act story. There's more to it. It's jumping the gun to next week a bit, but let's go ahead. When Peter and John are joyful witnesses to Christ's resurrection, people begin to get upset with them. The text says the leaders are annoyed because they kept teaching and proclaiming that in Jesus there is resurrection, there is life, there is joy. So what did the leaders do? They arrested them 
and threw them in jail. That's Acts chapter 4, verse 3. And do you know what the next verse says? Acts 4, 4 says that because of their testimony, many believed in Jesus of Nazareth, and the church grew. The church grew to 5,000 strong, it says. It's no wonder that Paul kept talking about joy, that joy of Christ, and all those letters he wrote with shackled hands from Roman prison cells. Joy becomes our resistance against the powers of death that know nothing of the Easter life. You've figured out by now that happiness is fleeting, but we get to be an Easter people, joyful people, with souls grounded in the living Christ who has given us this abundant Easter life. Seek out Christ in all that you do, making time for him each day and each week. I hope you leap for joy and praise God upon meeting him. I hope we can all be witnesses to the resurrection. I hope God's joy abounds in your life and in our lives together. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ, the stone which the builders rejected. God has made cornerstone of a new resurrection com community. In that name by which we are founded, let us draw near in confidence and pray, saying, Lord, have mercy. The risen Christ opened the minds of the disciples to understand the scriptures. May the church find in the scriptures healing, mission, and good good news for all. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ showed wounded hands and feet to his unbelieving apostles. May we see the risen one in all the wounded of our world. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, our cornerstone, intercedes for us before God. Let us and in all people all in authority heed God's call for justice in the church 
in our community and in the nation. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We are saved by, by God, who in light, in whom there are, is no darkness at all. Let us beg for God's light in those places which seems darkest. Let us ask that God enlighten all who inflict darkness on others. Let us seek for God to illuminate those who are victims of the evil. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the power of Christ's name, we are healed. Let us re recall all who need healing, especially Vanessa, Joanne, Pete, Tom, Malcolm, Eleanor, Carol, John, Paula, Richard, Shelby, Andre, and Miriam, and those who serve in vocations of healing. For them, let us pray, pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In Easter, Christ overcame death and the grave. We remember all those who have died, especially Mildred Wright that they might know the fullness of resurrection of joy. For the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. 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 to the Lord the honors due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts with praise.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. In beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you 
Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember Jose, our bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop, Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and all who minister in your church. Remember all your people and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into the place of eternal joy and light. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. John and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.